Hello everyone and welcome to HRMT 622 week 6. Our focus this week is on HR and HR planning. In this lecture we'll talk about what is HR, a quick definition, HR evolution and challenges, human resource management and human resource planning, then in part B we refer to the process within HRP. Let me give you an overview first. When we talk about human resources, are the people and organization employees to carry out various jobs, tasks, and functions in exchange for wages, salaries, and other rewards? So that's a very basic definition of HR when we talk about people within an organization. There are some purposes behind that. They do some activities, HR, uh, runs some tasks, manages, and basically this is happening within the blood system, and that is wages, salaries, or other rewards or incentives within the company. Let's go and talk a little bit the evolution. In the past, when we had scientific management, that was one of the earliest approaches uh, at workplace. And the focus was on the division of labor, as we discussed it last week. Um, so the main concern that time was that individuals need to have their own roles while working in a company. So that was a very basic foundation of HR. But when we go a little bit forward, we talk about when at the time of human relations era was marked by an emphasis on finding ways to keep workers happy. Now, the concept of workplace satisfaction, the wellness of employees was the concern, a little bit bigger, important concept. So they believed that happy workers were more productive workers. This is also a very basic concept that the term HR has been evolved. The next thing is that when we have a lot of companies, when companies grew, so perhaps they had different departments, again, our focus last week. And then, so people had to work with employees. There was something called personnel management, another important term appeared. But these days we are facing a little bit more a sophisticated version of HR, especially after 1964 Civil Rights Act. So the focus was more on offering or allocating legal reg regulations um, for the process of hiring and promoting your employees. Then the HR specialists were needed at this time. So you can look at this um, paradigm or this timeline of the evolution related to HR. But HR has also faced a lot of challenges. For example, among the challenges we can refer to how to engage our workplace, how to attract new talents to the company. Um, HR is also dealing with managing relationships, especially when there are some uh, difficulties between employees and their managers. Training and development strategies are uh, the other areas HR is dealing with, talent retention, especially the importance of diversity in the workplace. And when we talk about Canada, this is a very obvious topic. Or, of course, when companies go through a lot of changes before the pandemic, after the pandemic, HR is, is responsible to embrace it, to cope with it. Um, when we also talk about the health or well-being of our uh, employees in company, HR is dealing with this. So these are uh, eight important areas, or sometimes we can talk about challenges within the field of HR. And you can also look at this source if you need more information. But now move on to something a little bit different. And... Um, of, but of course, within the realm of HR, and that is HRM, Human Resource Management. Uh, what is it exactly? It's like a process. This is a process of planning 
organizing, directing, and controlling. The procurement means the preparation, development, compensation, integration, the maintenance within the company, and, and separation it means that those people who do not want to work with a company anymore of what? Of human resources to the end. So what's the main purpose? The purpose is that organizational, individual, and societal needs are satisfied. So which field is dealing with all these terms? There needs to be a management. There needs to be a system. And that system is HRM. But what is planning um, as part of HRM? Planning says, HR planning includes all activities managers do to forecast current and future HR needs. So let's say a bunch of or a number of activities or tasks the managers or the HR specialists do in order to forecast um, our current needs as well as our future needs. And of course, when we talk about planning, this happens before the uh, recruitment and selection parts. Um, also, another key word that we are dealing with is the importance of, uh, of demand. So what's the most important demand in the company? So they're going to forecast that. What are the needs? Uh, what are our um, areas of gaps that we need to fill? And that's our demand. However, another important term that is being discussed in HR planning is the importance of supply. So HRP also works with supply forecasts. It means availabilities and the other qualifications, talents existing both inside the company and outside the company. Now, I just wanted to give you an overview, a little bit about HR, its history, challenges, human resource management, human resource planning. Now, let's go to part B. This part um, is focusing on our textbook, chapter number three. Our textbook says that human resource planning forecasts an organization's future demand for and supply of employees. So two key terms, please keep it in mind, and matches supply with demand through a lot of objectives and strategies. So that's a beautiful definition too. So um, I uh, made the important words bold for you, like future demand, supply of employees, and matching these two. So demand and supply, demand means what the company needs, the um, areas the company needs to fill, and okay, supply what they have, or what they have both inside the company or can be found outside the company. This chart is super important because the rest of my lecture will focus on this um, process. And when we talk about the HR planning process, there are five important steps. I wrote some keywords beside each step, so keep it in mind. Step number one, what in HRP we do, we forecast demand for resources. So what are some causes for those demands and what are some techniques that we can use in order to forecast them? Step number two, assess supply of resources. So we are referring to two internal versus external supplies. Step number three, then when we assess them, when we are familiar with both internal and external supplies, what do we need to do? We need to also offer some strategies in two areas. Oversupply, what should we do when we have more people than we really need inside the company, like during the pandemic? And then sometimes, when we need to hire people or to recruit people, what are some common strategies? So when we talk about okay, developing HR objectives, we are also talking about strategies needed. And step number four, we need to design and implement workforce systems to balance demands 
and supply. So strategies are okay, but we need a system in order to record, monitor, and report um, these two issues. I mean, demand and supply. And finally, when we talk about evaluation, how can we evaluate what we have done so far in HR planning? We need to have H HRA or human resource accounting. And also HRIS, human resource information systems. Let's go step by step and talk about this. So have your notes ready. Um, when we talk about forecasting, step number one, I also show you this process chart so you can have a look at it and get a better picture. Step number one, forecasting, or it means we, uh, we are at the time to identify the causes that will derive uh, demand. So when we talk about demand, this is a very important thing we need to think of. And uh, but but before I go and talk about causes, let me tell you one important thing. I didn't write it here, but I want what I want to share. So the thing is that uh, why do some companies need planning? That's a very good question. Um, so perhaps when we talk about planning at organizations, um, we're talking about five levels of planning. Sometimes um, small companies like you, so you have a shopping downtown with only one or two employees. So this is level one of planning. Means that, uh, in fact, you aren't really dealing with any kind of a specific uh, planning for your for your business, right? Because you have only one or two employees. So that's why this is called level one planning. Uh, like some family-run businesses. When we talk about level two, it's a little bit different. Um, when you have this idea that your business, like your bakery, is going to grow, therefore, you need to plan. You need to think of recruiting, hiring some people, but how? So that's why HRP can be useful here. A level three, when some companies um, try to create longer-term forecasts, uh, for example, for the next five years, where do you want to go with this bakery? Are you going to open other branches? If you have this idea in mind, then you're dealing with level three of planning. And of course, level four and five, when we talk about big companies, when they're thinking about like the next 10 years, the expansion or the big changes in their companies. Now, I just wanted to tell you, because get something, why do we need planning and YHRP planning. So I, I just described the word P. Hope that uh, that's helpful for you. But why do we need this? Why is a good question. Why do company, companies need to have a planning system? Then we're going to talk about some important uh, causes. Now, there's one thing here is that a strategic uh, plan, for example, uh, okay, demographic impacts, uh, these are very important. So when, when we talk about strategic uh, plan, um, for example, uh, the company's strategic plan is to grow, is to create new new products. The company is pushing you to um, uh, increase or to grow your rates. Uh, when, when, okay, this is the strategy of the company, therefore you need a planning uh, okay, system for that. So that's the main cause. Why do companies try to um, come to HRP? Another thing is like demographic uh, impacts. What is happening in society? And uh, perhaps at both a regional level, uh, a provincial level, or even national level, what are the common forces in terms of like, demography? It means that uh, it can be the okay, population, uh, number of immigrants, etc. We have also turnover is another thing that companies need to think of planning, like how many how many employees leave the company or depart the company. When there are some legal changes, technological changes in society, like what happened at UCW when they okay, decided to move their classes from in-person to online, then they had to change something in HR, right? The hours uh, teachers taught online, their salaries, etc., etc. Therefore, at the time of uh, these issues, 
we need to think of planning. Or when you look at the other companies, uh, when we talk about budget forecasts or new ventures, all these things, um, we need to, these are the main causes companies think of planning. Now, after talking about some of these important causes, let's talk about some techniques. Now, we know some causes. Uh, we want to offer some planning for a company, right? But what are some techniques? That's a beautiful part. When we talk about techniques, we can uh, think of three areas. Number one, experts are dealing with the planning part. Sometimes we look at previous uh, data, so trends are important, or there are some other uh, you know, methods. When we talk about expert, for example, we have informal and instant decisions. When companies or HR specialists make some important decisions for the planning. So like those people who are working in the HR department in your company. So that's a very informal and very quick instant decisions they make. Um, when we talk about expert, sometimes uh, we have expert surveys. So when, when we talk about okay, surveys, we collect data, we, uh, we think about them, try to analyze them, code them, publish them, and then we make important decisions, how to plan it better for our company. Also, we have the uh, Delphi technique here, and that is also, for example, when a group of experts uh, sit, sit together, they have a lot of meetings, and then they also uh, try to give feedback, or can look at surveys, analyze them, have again another meeting so this is again a very common method of delphi then when we talk about trend so the okay trends there are two popular ways companies um, use as techniques to plan for their hr one of them is extrapolation and when we talk about extrapolation means uh, looking at the past uh, what has happened or what happened in the past in this company and what um, have been done and how successful or unsuccessful those things were. In this case, so perhaps so you're dealing with data and the past data and you can make decisions. That's also a technique to plan for your HR. But when we talk about indexation, that's your look towards future. So extrapolation, okay, looking at, uh, at the past experiences, indexation looks at uh, future or towards, okay, future. So this is in fact is a method of estimating future employment needs. Of course, you can also look at previous data too. There are the other trends, so we don't wanna emphasize them. Just keep in mind when we are talking about some techniques, in order to uh, run planning, there are two main areas, expert or trans. Now, let's go to step number two when we talk about demand. So the first thing that we talk, remember, number one was about demand. And demand has a definition. Demand has some causes. Demand needs some techniques. Now, in step number two, we we're talking about supply. It means, what do we have? So when we talk about supply, it goes to both internal versus external. Now let's go a little bit talk about that. When you talk about internal, it means that uh, what is the in inventory within your company? So skills inventories means that who are working with you in your company? What are their skills? What are their abilities? Also, we don't just talk about employees. We can talk about management and leadership inventories. Uh, what are the uh, uh, capabilities of your managers? When companies have a replacement charts, so everything, so there are lots of handouts available. The HR team um, has made it already. So there are lots of uh, replacement tests. So you know that if someone goes, who can be filled in this position? The job descriptions are ready. The uh, procedures are very clear. Um, they have been tested in the past, and also of okay, replacement of okay, summaries. It means that uh, the uh, the job, like the job descriptions, are available for a position. So what you what you have 
in your pocket in a very simple language internally inside the company but that's not enough when we talk about supply because the company is not just working alone it is within a bigger context a bigger environment so there are of course some external features like what's the labor market analysis when the hr specialists analyze the market they know about the uh, the availabilities in the market community attitudes also creates a form of supply for you it means that who are people in society? Are they with growth mindset, non-growth attitudes? So these are your availabilities, your supplies. Of course, also demographic trends means that, uh, for example, there are a lot of companies doing research and publish their findings. So the HR specialist can have access uh, to those data, like Statistics Canada. So if you want to make decisions, if you want to plan, you can look at what you have inside your company your own assets this is called internal but what are the other things existing outside external let's go to number three now when we talk about when we know about demands supplies internal external now is the thing uh, what should we do with them? We need to create a balance, right? So we need to um, have some strategies in order to achieve, in order to make sure that our supplies, what we have, our demands, what we need to have, will match or they uh, work together well. When we talk about strategies, step number three, um, let's, let's say we are looking at two levels. Number one, oversupply. Uh, when you have a lot of supplies, so you don't need them. And what should we do at this time? And sometimes we have the, the shortage of supply. But let's go and look at level one. When we talk about oversupply, now the HR team needs to do something for it. You have more people than needed in your company, right? So perhaps three common strategies, very popular. Headcount reduction is one of them. There are lots of layoffs. If you remember during the COVID-19, maybe even your company, but a lot of companies in Vancouver um, asked their employees uh, to leave the company. So layoffs are there. Sometimes they want you to leave without payment. You can just have fun or enjoy your time. Or there are some incentives for okay, voluntary okay, separation or some termination means that you stop your contract. It could be any reason. Uh, sometimes when you have oversupply in your company, what kind of a strategy a company does or the HR does is attrition. They stop hiring people or sometimes they go for early retirement because people uh, leave the company. So because the problem is oversupply or sometimes they're having alternative work arrangement. So like job sharing, uh, people can work in different areas in the in the companies or also they use part-time employees instead of full-time because maybe there is a short period of time they need them right so okay, level number one when we talk about strategies oversupply what are the oversupplies and then be careful here demand and attrition is is working here when we talk about level number two, when we have shortage. Now, these days, when you look at a lot of companies in Canada, Vancouver, they began hiring people. So when we talk about employee shortage, what, what HR does is something called staffing. They need to hire people. And we have four staffing options here, very, very popular. So sometimes you go and hire employees it could be full-time, part-time, or even temporary. Sometimes source service providers, there are some third parties, or then here we talk about outsourcing. A lot of companies, for example, if you need some people for cleaning your company, uh, so you don't need to hire people for that. You, have, you make a contract with the third party company. So like this is called outsourcing. They come and handle everything. So you don't need to hire people, you don't need to offer them benefits, and you don't need to deal with them directly. So that's a good thing. Or 
so this is important. Now, okay, developing employees internally at the time is that sometimes uh, employees work at the, the lower levels in company. Now, there is a need uh, for some managers, for some upper level workers. Therefore, the company comes and as a kind of a strategy, they train their employees, they make them ready for upper positions. Or sometimes we have existing work arrangements. Um, okay, sometimes if there is shortage, uh, some companies use another strategy called overtime workers. So they ask their employees to stay a little bit longer, complete the tasks, or maybe um, they can do partly, uh, so they give them a kind of a, a flexible schedule. So if they want to work on weekends, they have this policy, etc. So step number three, when we talk about strategies within HRP, please think about it. We think about supply and demand again, but at two levels, how these two terms are matching or are um, dealing with each other. Number one, oversupply, when you have a lot of employees, what should we do with them? When we need employees, what should we do now? But let's go to level four. Okay, level four is that happens when you all know your strategies what do you want to do? Everything is set, um, for example, for oversupply or for shortage. But this should be within a system, right? Because uh, it can't be only through handouts. That's why in HR, they're trying to design a system. And this system is called HRIS. And this system is used to collect records, stores, uh, uh, so they also analyze and retrieve data, okay, from the organization's human resources. So it saves them, analyzes them, and gives, okay, reports. Now, who, who need this or who are dealing with this? Perhaps stakeholders like the H, HR uh, professionals, managers, and employees, in fact, uh, need this kind of the system. But what is very important here is there are some key terms. Please, please keep it in your mind. Why? What is the importance of um, HRIS? Number one, many companies need to have this system in order to increase their efficiency. And when I say efficiency, is the speed of um, offering services to their employees. Like what? Like when they have their handouts ready. If there are some positions in the company, each position has a very clear uh, job job description. If their okay, reports okay delivery system um, is updated. Now, if companies uh, have this kind of system, of course their efficiency goes uh, better. And also effectiveness is another thing, but we'll be careful when we talk about effectiveness, we talk about the importance of decision-making. Companies need to have this system in order to make better decisions. Because when you look at the, the okay, records, uh, the uh, sorry, reports, or even the okay, records of your employees, of course you can make better decisions. And the third thing, which is very related to our course, is talent management. So companies need to have the system to monitor their talents within the company to see that if there's a need to hire other talents for the company. So talent management is another thing that shows the importance of having this okay, system. But when companies want to um, um, employ or use this kind of Okay, system, they need to think of some functions. The size of the company is important, is one factor. What are the objectives of your company? Or, uh, for example, what are some uh, te technical uh, capabilities that your company have? Or even what are your supplies? What are your availabilities right now uh, can okay, determine what kind of system is important? And finally, when we talk about access, means that who can use this kind of system? Of course, the HR team, but sometimes um, some, some parts of 
information can be confidential, therefore only specific people can have access uh, to this kind of system. And finally, let's go to the last part, and that is about uh, how can we evaluate, how can we monitor, how can we establish a form of uh, evaluation system within the HRP, and that is uh, Human Resource Accounting HRA. So it's like a process uh, to measure the present cost and value of human resources as well as their future worth to the organization. So this is a kind of a method. If you want to know more about it, uh, we can say that this is a method. This is a kind of an approach a lot of companies try to have uh, in order to uh, collect this. Um, it's, it's, it's a kind of um, a managerial tool. If you want to okay, write it down, it's, it's a form of a managerial tool for companies to keep the records of their HR planning. Thank you very much and have a good day.